goodness with care from our villages arokya milk welcome to episode 16 of mahabharata with anuja this is one of the saddest chapters in the mahabharata and proof if any were needed that in a war there are never any winners Uh, so the situation is like this drona had been appointed as the commander of the army and uh, duryodhana had asked him to capture yudhishthira alive and to end the war now drona had been uh, unable to fulfill this vow because arjuna protected his brother and made sure drona did not get close to him and uh, duryodhana was not the sort who handled disappointment very well so he had a very sharp tongue also and he kept on insulting drona he said uh, i thought you were the greatest and you cannot keep your word to me and because he was continuously insulted like this drona said on the 13th day i promise i will claim a mighty hero on the pandava side i will claim his life and i will capture yudhishthira for you so uh, drona arranged his troops in a very complicated chakravyuha formation it was one of the deadliest formations and only four men alive knew how to penetrate it one was krishna his son pradyumna who was not part of the war and then there was arjuna and abhimanyu so this was the formation knowing this drona arranged it like this and the samsaptakas they were the suicide squad they challenged arjuna and they led him to the southernmost part of the field and uh, using this chakravyuha formation drona did a lot of damage and they simply could not counter his attack and he kept drawing closer and closer to yudhishthira and uh, the pandavas didn't know what to do arjuna was in there uh, it seemed like a very difficult time for them and finally yudhishthira turned to abhimanyu and he said uh, only you can do this please penetrate this formation otherwise uh, the battle is going to end today itself everything will be lost and uh, abhimanyu said uh, i consider it an honor to be able to help my family don't worry i will take care of it but there's just one thing i know how to penetrate the formation but i do not know how to make my way out apparently uh, legend has it that he heard the story while he was in uh, subhadra's womb and arjuna had been talking about penetrating this formation and the baby had been listening but subhadra slept off when uh, arjuna was explaining how to break free and so abhimanyu did not know that and uh, yudhishthira said don't worry we will follow close on your heels the pandavas as well as the panchalas we will be behind you and uh, abhimanyu sought the blessings of the elders and without further ado he decided to breach this formation and his chariot uh, a very wise man named sumitra he said uh, prince you need to think about this they are asking too much of you you are only 16 years old this is a very heavy burden and abhimanyu said no i am my father's son i will not be afraid and uh, he uh, this gets to me every single time so do bear with me and uh, abhimanyu very fearlessly he tore his way through the chakravyuha forced a breach and he was in and quickly he started making his way into the heart of this deadly formation now yudhishthira kept his word drishtadyumna was close behind him but uh, unfortunately at that moment jayadratha he was the king of the sindhus and he was the husband of dushala the sister of duryodhana and uh, this king he fought with unmatched ferocity and he made sure that the breach was sealed and uh, yudhishthira and uh, drishtadyumna did their best bhima joined in the twins but their efforts were in vain for the rest of the day jayadratha would hold his position and he would not allow them any entrance into the chakravyuha now when he saw the despair and the anguish on their faces because they knew that uh, abhimanyu was being sent to his death now and uh, jayadratha was happy there was sick satisfaction on his face and there was a reason for this now when the pandavas had been in exile jayadratha had gone hunting and uh, he happened to chance on the place where the pandavas and draupadi lived and the pandavas had all gone out only draupadi and uh, sage daumya were there and uh, seizing this uh, opportunity he approached draupadi and uh, draupadi welcomed him because he was a relative he was dushala's husband she said please uh, come and be welcome my husbands will be home shortly 
and uh, Jayaratha said it's very very sad to see you like this in the forest why are you having such a difficult life you come away with me I will take good care of you and uh, Draupadi said what's wrong with you how can you speak to a married woman like this and uh, Jayaratha grabbed her hand forced her into the chariot and uh, he tried to carry her away when the Pandavas came home and found out what happened, they gave chase and uh, when uh, Jayaratha saw them pursuing him, very, uh, he was a coward, he pushed her out of the chariot and he tried to flee. Now uh, Yudhishthira immediately said, uh, Draupadi, are you okay? And then he said, uh, it's Dushala's husband, so let's let him go, let's not cause any more trouble. And uh, Draupadi was incensed. She said, I have five valiant husbands. It's bad enough, I was humiliated in the assembly. Now anybody feels free to come and molest me because they know my husbands won't do anything. I'm very unlucky and she started crying. And uh, um, Bhima could never bear her tears. So he decided to go after Jayaratha and punish him. And uh, Arjuna also went with Bhima. But uh, Yudhishthira said, remember what I said? He's our sister's husband, don't hurt him. And uh, Bhima and Arjuna went after him. They caught up with Jayaratha and uh, Arjuna quickly disarmed him. And then uh, Bhima dragged him from the chariot and he was furious with him for what he'd done. So he shaved his uh, hair and uh, he did it very roughly. So, you know, there were lots of injuries on his scalp. And then he trussed him up like a chicken, threw him into the chariot and dragged him back to Draupadi. And then he threw him at Draupadi's feet and he started kicking him. He said, uh, see, Draupadi, are you happy now? I told you I'll punish him. And Yudhishthira said, uh, what are you doing? Have I taught you nothing about Dharma? This is a relative, our sister's husband. And besides, he's a captured uh, enemy. You know, you've tied him up. He's helpless. You can't kick him like this. But Bhima was tired of listening to all this. He continued kicking. He said, come, Draupadi. He's our slave. You also kick him. And uh, Draupadi said, no, no, you've punished him. She was filled with revulsion. She said, I just can't bear to look at this creature's face and all, let him go. And uh, uh, Yudhishthira also lectured him about Dharma. He said, from now on, try and do the right thing, then only you'll be happy. And listening to Yudhishthira's lecture made him feel even worse. I don't blame him. So he went with hatred in his heart and he really wanted revenge on the Pandavas for humiliating him. So they say he spent a lot of time performing uh, severe penances to win Lord Shiva's grace. And when Shiva came before him, he asked that he be given the boon to destroy the Pandavas. Shiva said that, was, that is not possible, but you will check their advance once. And even then you won't be able to stop Arjuna. And uh, Jayadratha had to settle for that. He wasn't entirely satisfied, but he thought, okay, I have one chance, right? I will make it count. And he did make it count, okay? Now uh, Abhimanyu knew he was alone inside, deep inside the heart of the Chakravyuha, surrounded by mighty warriors on all sides, but he was daunt, uh, undaunted, absolutely fearless and so courageous, he marched in and he thought, okay, today is my day, I will shatter this formation from inside. And it seemed like he would do it on all sides. You know, the Kaurava troops started follow, falling and it was as though there were five enemy divisions inside, instead of just one lone warrior. And uh, Duryodhana turned to Karna and said, stop this fellow, he's done too much damage already. And Karna thought, uh, he's just a kid, what can he do? And very arrogantly, he raised his bow. But that day, uh, he was Arjuna's son and Karna felt as though he was fighting Arjuna. He simply could not stop him and he could only watch while he killed all of his brothers, Karna's brothers. And there was nothing Karna could do about it. And uh, he just couldn't believe that this boy, this mere slip of a boy was fighting like this. And uh, then at that point, uh, Duryodhana's son Lakshmana attacked Abhimanyu. Now there was a little rivalry between uh, Abhimanyu and uh, this Lakshmana. What had happened was they were both suitors for Balarama's daughter's hand. Her name was Vatsala and uh, she had chosen Abhimanyu. So with Gatotkacha's help, he would have carried her away, though Balarama had planned to marry her to Lakshmana. So Lakshmana had this uh, uh, grudge against Abhimanyu and the two of them clashed again. And uh, this time Abhimanyu killed him and uh, Duryodhana was furious. He said, what's the use? I might as well fight with puppies and kittens. All of you have allowed my son to die. I want Abhimanyu dead and I want him dead now. Okay? And uh, then Abhimanyu just turned, he started attacking Duryodhana. He came very close to capturing him and every single Maharati on the Kaurava side, they had to gather to protect him. Okay, so um, Karna turned to Drona and he said, at least today, prove that you are on our side. 
tell me tell me what has to be done to kill this fellow otherwise the battle ends now and uh, drona wished he could cut off his tongue rather than say the words but he said it he said arjuna's son cannot be defeated in straight combat you have to do something so foul i don't even want to say it karna said no tell me i will do whatever it takes and uh, dronacharya said he will not uh, you know be defeated while there's a bow in his hand so you will have to disarm him and in order to do that you'll have to do it from behind okay and uh, karna didn't even pause to think he shattered his bow from behind and drona then said uh, he will also uh, the his mobility will have to be compromised so kripacharya killed the chariot uh, sumitra and karna killed the horses and uh, kritavarman killed the rare attendants also so now he was properly alone and uh, he did not have his bow and still he would not back off he picked up a sword he picked up a shield and he jumped to the to the floor and he started fighting again and he moved so fast he was faster than most men on chariots so now this time karna shattered his shield and uh, it was dronacharya who smashed his sword who shattered it cut it off at the hilt now again uh, he wouldn't he looked around and for some weapon uh, he saw a chariot wheel and he sta- he picked up a mace i guess he picked up a mace and he attacked ashwatthama and that was also destroyed this mace was destroyed he picked up a chariot wheel and at that point uh, dushasana's son who had been very close to lakshmana he decided something needed to be done his name was saindava he and lakshmana had been very close and uh, his eyes were just blood red with fury and uh, he attacked abhimanyu and uh, the two of them went at it with their fists and they wrestled long and hard they rained blows on each other and finally both of them collapsed and uh, saindava was the first one to get up and uh, he picked up a mace which was lying there and he smashed abhimanyu's skull in and abhimanyu did not get up no matter how many times i say this this part just kills me abhimanyu did not get up and uh, there was a hush for a brief moment the world had become a darker place an uglier place with him gone and uh, just a moment there was a hush and uh, drona was praying he was praying that they be that they be forgiven for all their sins and uh, all the kaurava troops they were like uh, dancing around his body and when the pandavas heard this none of them had the heart to fight they just threw down their weapons and all of them left they just ran from the battlefield hardened warriors they were all crying and they were all gone and uh, this was how it was uh, that the, uh, at the end of the 13th day and uh, arjuna meanwhile he dove been battling the samsaptakas the suicide squad and uh, finally the sun had set he was on his way back and uh, as krishna rode towards their camp he said something is wrong krishna i can feel it there's silence everywhere nobody is looking at me what is wrong is yudhishthira okay and uh, krishna said don't worry yudhishthira and your brothers they are all fine and uh, he did not have the heart to tell him what had happened and uh, they all made their way inside and uh, uh, arjuna said uh, where's abhimanyu every day he is the first to greet me and he'll want to know what all had happened where's my son and slowly the truth started dawning on him he made his way to the tent where all his brothers were gathered he saw that they'd all been crying that they were all you know prostrate with grief and then he turned he said drona arranged the uh, you know troops in, a, in the chakra vyuha formation don't tell me you sent my son to penetrate it he did not know how to come out don't tell me you let that child go in alone and none of you went behind him the brave pandavas the mighty panchalas don't tell me you let him go alone and unprotected and uh, none of them could answer they could not answer even and um, he said tell me tell me what happened and uh, yudhishthira told we did our best to follow his voice was also breaking he said i'm so sorry but we couldn't go behind him and uh, you know they killed him and then he said my son cannot be killed in straight combat so they surrounded him and they slaughtered him and um, he started yelling at his brothers he said if i had known if i had known that the brave pandavas the panchalas you all were incapable of taking care of my son i would not have left him in your care and uh, krishna said arjuna don't be so harsh you know you know very well that all of them w- would give their lives very happily in exchange for abhimanyu so 
please calm down. And then uh, Arjuna again, he turned, he said, tell me, tell me what happened. And uh, when uh, Yudhishthira told him everything, he, f he fainted. He first fainted, the great warrior Arjuna. And then when he, at the height of his grief, suddenly the anger that rose inside him and on the strength of that rage, he stood up again and he said, I will not rest till I have killed Jayadratha. Tomorrow, by sunset, I will claim his life. If I do not do that, then I am unworthy of this life. I will enter the flames and kill myself. And he twanged his Gandiva and uh, Krishna lifted the mighty Panchajanya conch and he blew on it. And when that sound was heard, it was the sound of death in the Kaurava camp. And hardened veterans trembled and they were all crying because they were so terrified. And when Jayadatha heard it, it was as though Yama had come to visit him. And uh, he panicked, coward that he was. He ran to Duryodhana. He said, uh, let me go. I don't want to die. I've done my best for you. Let me go back. I'll go back to my kingdom. And uh, Duryodhana said, don't worry. This is actually a blessing in disguise. You know, if Arjuna has said that if he doesn't kill you, he will enter the flames and give up his life. And then the war will be over. Without him, the Pandavas are nothing. And uh, Arjuna may think he's great, but Karna is worth a hundred Arjunas. Don't worry. And then Duryodhana took him to meet uh, Drona. And Drona said, don't worry. I will do everything in my power to protect you. We will keep you safe. And um, having been consoled like this, Jayadratha felt better and he agreed to stay. Meanwhile, Krishna was worried. He turned to Arjuna and he said, uh, uh, you know, you were very rash and reckless. You should have consulted me before saying these things. And uh, Arjuna said, no. He said, what has happened, Krishna? My son is gone. Tomorrow, whether I win or lose this war, life has no meaning for me anymore without him. And uh, he said, uh, how do you think I'm going to go console Subhadra? What am I going to say to Uttra, his wife? She's carrying his son. What am I going to tell her? How will I console them? He said, how will I even face Draupadi? Abhimanyu is her favorite. You know that. She'll always say, he looks just like you. He's a warrior like you. He's only the best of the lot. He's my uh, favorite. And uh, he said, I can't console any of them, but I can avenge him and I will do it, Krishna. I promise I will do it. And uh, Krishna told him, seek the blessings of uh, Shiva, calm yourself down, we will do this together. And uh, Arjuna said, you go console all the ladies, I cannot face them tonight. You go meet Subhadra, you meet Uttara, you meet Draupadi, you talk to them. I cannot, I cannot face them. I, I don't have the strength for that. And Krishna said, don't worry, I will comfort them. You just focus on the task ahead. And uh, then uh, Krishna called his charioteer, whose name was Daruka. He said, Daruka, prepare my chariot, place all my weapons in it. Tomorrow, if you hear the Rishabha note, that's the bull note, he said, if you hear that on my uh, conch, I want you to come. I will destroy a world if Arjuna is not in it. So that was uh, Krishna's very emotional thing because, you know, Arjuna was his best friend. He said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to help him do this. And uh, that night, uh, Arjuna, while he was uh, sleeping, uh, he, as Krishna had said, he started praying to Shiva. And uh, that's how he slept that night. And uh, in his dreams, Krishna came to him. And together, they say both of them went to Kailasha. They met Shiva and Parvati and uh, worshipped him. And then Shiva asked him to go to an enchanted lake and bring a bow and a quiver full of arrows. When Arjuna had fetched it, he personally taught him how to use his uh, Pasupata missile. And uh, so when Arjuna had received this, he felt strength flow through his veins and he knew he was going to do it. So when uh, the morning broke, he was very alert, very focused. He called Satyaki. He said, today I'll be busy trying to kill Jayadratha. It's going to be difficult as you know, but I am going to do it. But Drona will use this opportunity to somehow capture Yudhishthira. So I'm placing my brother's life in your hands. Don't let me down. Drona had also been very busy. He'd arranged the troops in an extremely complicated formation. From the front, it resembled a cart and a wheel. And behind this, there was a lotus. And concealed inside this lotus at the very heart, there was a needle formation, a Suchi Vyuha. And inside this needle, Jayadratha was placed and he was surrounded by eight Maharatis. Now this entire formation, it extended to about 12 miles on the battlefield. 
but uh, Arjuna was undaunted. Uh, he looked at the enemy lines, he found the weak spot at once and he managed to force his way forward and uh, Drona immediately confronted him and the two of them started battling and uh, it was a long and hard duel and Krishna got real irritated. He said, Arjuna, you have no plans of killing Drona, he's your guru, he has no plans of killing you, he cannot also, you all can keep this up all day, it's time for you to move on. And uh, Arjuna immediately made his way past uh, Drona and Drona said, what is this Arjuna? Without conquering your enemy, you're going like this, you're retreating. And uh, Arjuna said, you're not my enemy, you're my guru. And saluting him, he went on his way. And uh, next, he had to contend with the king of Kalinga, a very mighty warrior named uh, Shrutayuda. And uh, again, Arjuna did not have time to waste on him, so he decided to make a quick end of it. Uh, he killed the charioteer, he killed his horses, and uh, Shrutayuda knew he was next. And he was very angry, so uh, suddenly he, he decided to reply in kind. He picked up a mace and he threw it at Krishna, Arjuna's charioteer. And uh, Arjuna saw the mace and he's releasing arrow after arrow from his Gandiva. But the mace did not even slow and nothing happened to it. And he could only watch helplessly as it made its way towards Krishna's chest. For a, for a brief second, he was terrified. And then suddenly, the mace just rebounded and it attacked Shrutayuda instead and he died. And uh, Arjuna was totally confused. He had no idea what was happening. And uh, then Krishna said, I'll keep moving, but I'll also explain. Uh, he said that Shrutayuda was born to Varuna, the god of the waters, and the river goddess Parnasa. Now, this goddess had asked Varna, Varuna to give him a weapon that would make him invincible in battle. And hence, he would have given him this mace, but he would have warned him, if you attack somebody who's unarmed and defenseless, it will rebound on you. And in the heat of battle, he'd uh, forgotten and he paid for it with his life. Now, there were many more warriors who attacked Arjuna, but he kept proceeding steadily across the battle lines. And then suddenly, uh, Krishna told him, Arjuna, the horses are completely tired, they are blown. These were Gandharva steeds, but even they'd been, uh, you know, they'd done too much work. And Krishna said, we need to do something about the horses. So, Arjuna jumped down from the chariot and uh, he used his arrows to create a pool of water. And then he built an enclosure for Krishna, made entirely of arrows, so that he could attend to their wounds and soothe them and massage them for a little bit. And immediately, all the soldiers thought Arjuna is on foot, we can get him now. But again, Arjuna on foot, he was faster than most men on horses and they could not even get close to him. The entire sky seemed to be blotted out with, you know, the steady stream of arrows from the Gandiva. And uh, at this point, Yudhishthira was very worried. As usual, he was being very annoying. So uh, he told Satyaki, uh, I want you to go and make sure Arjuna is okay. Satyaki said, but listen, uh, he asked me to look after you. But uh, Yudhishthira said, no, I will not be happy unless I know what has happened to Krishna and Arjuna. I don't hear the twang of the Gandiva, so you go. So Bhima and Rishtadyumna were given the task of looking after Yudhishthira and Satyaki made his way in. Now Drona was talking to Duryodhana, he said, you fight Arjuna, I will go capture Yudhishthira. Arjuna has been driven too far away from him, I will go and capture Yudhishthira for you. Duryodhana said, how am I supposed to fight Arjuna when he defeated you, his guru? And uh, Drona was a little insulted, but again he decided to bear it. He said, uh, I will place an impenetrable armour on you, so you know, you will be able to fight him today. So once uh, that armor was tied on Duryodhana, he felt very, very courageous and he challenged Arjuna. And uh, Krishna asked Arjuna, what's going on? How come your arrows aren't hurting him? He said, Rona has tried the armor for him. That's why he's so brave. But wait, I'll show you how it's done. And uh, he immediately released sharp arrows which lodged themselves under his fingernails. And it was like, you know, it caused agonizing pain to Duryodhana and he fled from the battlefield. And um, Arjuna, meanwhile, he continued, but at this point, uh, Satyaki had, while he was trying to follow Arjuna, he would have drawn closer. And Arjuna was saying, uh, you know, now I have to worry about Yudhishthira and I also have to worry about killing Jayadratha. At this point, uh, Satyaki was engaged in a clash with a warrior called uh, Burishrava. Now, these two were old enemies, okay? They had this blood feud going back a couple of generations. Because both their ancestors would have wanted to marry Devaki, Krishna's mother, and uh, they would have done lots of uh, unforgivable things to each other because of that. So uh, these two picked it up and there was a horrible clash and Satyaki was exhausted because he'd been uh, doing a very good job of protecting Yudhishthira and he was not a match for Burushrava. 
and uh, he he just collapsed he fainted and at that point uh, burushrava placed his leg his feet on his head and then he raised his sword to cut off his head and uh, krishna called arjuna and he said uh, satyaki is your friend you cannot let him die like this so arjuna was a little reluctant because you know without warning you can't attack somebody especially when they're fighting someone else uh, but listening to krishna he released an arrow and burushrava's raised arm was cut off and it just fell down like that and burushrava turned and he said uh, how could you do this you have a reputation for righteousness for fair conduct how could you do this i was fighting someone else you attacked without warning and uh, arjuna was very upset because everyone started supporting burushrava they said fire on you arjuna shame on you he said what what about you do you know how to treat a fallen foe he's unconscious and you insulted him and you were also going to cut off his head while he was defenseless and um, burushrava when he heard this uh, he felt very bad he'd lost an arm and uh, that to his fighting arm and he felt that his honor had been insulted so he entered a certain yogic position and he wanted to give up his life now at this point uh, satyaki rose up and before arjuna or anybody could stop him he cut off burushrava's head and people were saying shame and that and this and uh, arjuna knew he had no time to debate the rights and wrongs of this matter uh, you know the sun was beginning its downward descent it was going to set and there were still you know eight maharathis between him and jayadratha he knew that uh, you know he could defeat them all but time again was the factor and uh, krishna immediately said uh, arjuna you won't be able to do it without using strategy so i'm going to create an illusion of sunset and immediately all the maharathis they'll drop their weapons and they'll start celebrating i want you to strike then and then he said there's one more thing you have to remember jayadratha's father's name was vidakshatra and uh, at the time of jayadratha's birth it had been prophesized that he would be decapitated by the greatest warrior this world has seen and uh, vridakshatra immediately uh, you know he would have been very angered on hearing this and he cursed this unknown warrior he would have cursed him and said whoever is responsible for my son's head rolling on the floor his own head will explode in the next moment okay so krishna told him this and he said be careful so uh, arjuna murmured a prayer he raised an arrow fixed it to his bow and he was ready and then krishna created that illusion of sunset and immediately the kauravas started cheering they were like yes we won now arjuna will have to die and they were all screaming and they dropped their weapons and at that moment arjuna released his arrow it flew true and fast it neatly severed his head and he kept up a steady stream of arrows so they lifted his head high up into the heavens and vridakshatra uh, krishna had told him about it vridakshatra was at an ashram not far from kurukshetra the battlefield where they all were and uh, these arrows carried jayadratha's head and it landed on vridakshatra's lap he was meditating it landed on his lap and after his prayers were done vridakshatra got up and his son's head rolled and fell on the floor okay and at that moment his head exploded into a thousand pieces and um, krishna lifted the illusion at that same moment and uh, there was a burst of sunshine at that point for a few glorious moments the entire battlefield was bathed in light and everyone was looking horror struck and they turned and they saw that uh, jayadratha's headless body was on the ground and uh, immediately krishna and arjuna they raised their conscious arjuna's is devdatta and uh, krishna's is panchajanya and uh, they started uh, you know blowing on it to signal their victory so it was on that day that this mighty hero arjuna he decimated eight akshohinis or divisions of the kaurava army he fulfilled his vow and he avenged his son now this concludes one of the most tragic chapters in the mahabharata i hope uh, you learned a lot from it you know the drill people so please do uh, the needful and uh, be sure to let me know your thoughts on arjuna's valorous deeds and karna's cowardice in the comment section I will see you soon for your next dose of the Mahabharata. Thank you. with care from our villages arokya milk